I'm here at the massive Dairy Masters stand at the Ploughing Championships and I'm with Dr. John Daly, Manager of Research and Innovation with Dairy yes. Master. Thanks for joining me, John. You're very welcome, Megan. So listen, it looks like you've brought loads with you this year. We're surrounded by machines. So do you want to tell me a little bit about what you've brought with you this year? Okay, well obviously we are parlours, our milking parlours yep. are the core product and we have our um, swing over parlours and uh, rotary parlours. Okay. Um, we've also obviously, uh, as always, a big focus on energy and energy efficiency and mm -hmm. we've, from variable speed vacuum pumps to our super efficient milk cooling tanks, okay. heat recovery units and we have our dairy wall here showing how farmers can okay. save energy in the dairy and, and maximise energy efficiency. Um, we, we have a range of other products as well, such as drafting, which is tied in with our draft now, uh, mobile phone app, uh, we have calf feeding, and we have then our moon monitor system and uh, our softer suite then for herd management. Okay, and is there anything, I suppose, any particular new innovations or updates that you've brought to Ploughing 2022? Well, really, I suppose we took the opportunity, I suppose, with COVID yeah. to go back and uh, we looked at our herd management platform mm -hmm. and we developed uh, our new our Dairy View 360. So we basically took what we were doing in herd management and decided we needed to rewrite it from scratch. So we completely redeveloped the architecture, rebuilt it from scratch. Okay. We decided we'd take that time and really reuse it and really make it um, uh, suitable for 21st century to be able to link in all of the Dairy Master products in the one ecosystem okay. and collect all that data and be able to present that to the farmer in a, in a meaningful way. Okay, in kind of a more user-friendly way. More user-friendly way, yes. Yeah. But, uh, an updated interface, but also it allows the, the farm, the, the central farm system to link with all of our products and also okay. link with third party. And so whether the farmer wants this information in the parlor uh, or whether he wants it on the mobile phone, or again, if you want to link to third party, like for example, milk recording and so on, that, that all that data can automatically come in. And then we're able to help the farmer to make better management decisions based on having this central data. And the data will look at um, not just what's coming from the cows and the cow productivity, but also what's coming from the equipment uh, and, like I said, the third party data as well. Okay, and I suppose you mentioned it's better for farmers and things are more linked up and all of that. How does that then connect into, let's say, sustainability and energy? And I suppose we're facing into an energy crisis now. It's everybody's talking about it and um, we're here and Christmas lights won't be on as long and everything. So energy is important to focus on. Ener How is that kind of playing yeah, on I suppose area? if we look at sustainability and, and that's a core part of you know yeah. our focus in terms of our R&D, our focus is you know making dairy farm more profitable, enjoyable and sustainable and yeah. that's part of it. So on the energy side, we do a lot with, you know, like I said, the variable speed vacuum pumps, variable speed milk pumps. Yeah. We've done uh, a lot of research on our milk cooling side, making sure that our milk cooling is super energy efficient. And you know the trials we've shown there that the, our milk cooling tanks can actually reduce by two thirds compared to some of the, the products that may be on farms in Ireland, reduce the, the cooling costs. And that's super important, especially when we're talking about higher tariffs in a, potentially in the evening yeah. and so on. We also have um, probably the best heat recovery system that's on the market. So for every liter of milk cooled on the farm, we could produce a liter of water at 55 degrees minimum. Okay, wow. Which is a way above what what you know is typical of what would be expected out there. Okay. Um, but sustainability on, on dairy farming is about more than just uh, the energy efficiency. Yeah. It's also you know we 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 we're, we're all been hit with the the climate change challenges and we we're all and I think to be fair Absolutely. to dairy farmers they're they're really looking to see how they can improve on that. Yeah. And, I suppose and like with that. the with the uh, sectoral emissions targets now exactly. everyone is just so much more aware of it. Yeah. You now we're really thinking about it a lot more and I suppose dairy farmers some people may look at them and say well what are you doing so I suppose it's where well, you come in. That's really where you know the 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 sectoral emissions and from a dairy farmer's point of view is really going to be targeted more yeah. it's not actually the energy efficiency on the farm it's actually more the slurry use the land yeah. use and the animals and that's really where we come in in terms of you know what, what we're dealing with is, is the contact with the animals okay. and how we collect that data uh, and help the farmer make better decisions whether that be better breeding decisions so even if you take the the, the, um, the climate impact of a cow during her lifetime yeah you know if that cow's five or six years old she's had a certain climate impact. Now, if you've only got three lactations from that cow because of a uh, suboptimal breeding strategy, mm -hmm. then you've got less production for the same climate impact. Yeah, okay. So really, when, when we take the moon monitor system and tie that in with the data from the parlor and really optimize how we can help the farmer to do the breeding, 
that's just one example of where Dairy Master's products uh, can really help with the farmer to improve the, the climate impact and reduce essentially the, the carbon footprint per litre of milk produced or per kilogram of milk solids. Okay, and you said Moo monitoring system there. So our Moo monitor, How exactly does that work? Tell me a little so, bit about So our Moo Monitor Plus system, it's a health and fertility management system. Okay. So basically it's like a, a, it's a collar, it's a wearable for the cow. So we're tracking the, the cow's movement, her behaviour, her activity. Uh, and her Easter cycle. Okay. So we can identify, say, when the cow is in heat, when's the optimum time to breed the cow, even down to the number, the hours from when that heat started. Okay. Um, we can also um, track things like um, the, the, how much time the cow is spending feeding, how much time spending ruminating, uh, if there's health issues. Yeah. And by linking all of that, again, with the productivity data, and helping the farmer to make better decisions. Yeah. So, yeah, th I, I mentioned the breeding and, and making sure that the cow is in calf at the right time, yeah. especially in the, in, the graze, in the grazing scenario here in Ireland, that you really want the cow calving at the right time so that we can maximize the, the farmer can maximize the grass utilization. Okay. But it's also making sure that, you know, if the cow is sick, if there's anything wrong with the cow, that we can help identify by that sooner. And if there's an intervention needed, that can be done sooner so that you, know, okay. you prevent any longer term or a bigger problem occurring at the cow that may result in the cow having to be culled, for example. Okay, that's brilliant. And look, uh, it's very busy here and I'm sure you're hoping to get loads out of the ploughing. Are you here for the full three days? Here for the full three days, Great. absolutely. Look, so. Well, best of luck and thanks very much, John. Okay, thank, thank you very you. much, Megan. Thank okay. you.